This is episode nine. Um, in the previous episodes, we've shaped the butt. In our last episode, we shaped the pistol grip and flute area. The next thing we need to do is we need to shape this gun stock in and around this, this receiver. This poses um, some difficulties for us in as much as this receiver and then barrel are already polished and blued. So any work that I do at this point, I need to be really careful with because I don't want to scratch the metal. Um, if we did a, a, a complete custom, then we would match sand the, the wood or match shape and sand the wood to the metal itself. Um, and then with, uh, following that, we would send the receiver into bluing and get it blued so that it exactly matched the, um, the wood itself. All right. Uh, if you remember from, a, from one of the earlier episodes, we talked about having to, um, to get those radiuses correct, and that's what I need to do this time. And in order to do that, I need to protect the, the metal uh, so that I don't scratch it. So the only place that I'm going to, to actually be really close in, in my wood shaping is right in this tang area. So in order to do that, um, I need to protect that. I'm going to take this yellow shim stock, it's plastic shim stock, and the shim stock is 20, 20 thousandths thick. So using, uh, using some shears, uh, I'm going to cut this shim stock. It'll match the shape of the metal. And then I'm going to use this tape. Now this tape is something that I use when I build guitars. It's a paper tape, but it's a strong tape with a lot of sticky on it. I'm going to use that this paper tape to, to, to hold the, the plastic down to this metal, and I'll just tape it down around, and that'll keep it in place so that when I begin to use my rasp and my files uh, to, to, to radius this to the metal, I'm less likely to scratch, scratch the metal. I'm not going to be able to take it down exactly to the, to the metal. I'm just going to get it close. I'll get it within the 20 thousandths, that's the um, thickness of that shim. But I'll be able to get that radius. And by getting the radius, then I can slowly work it down with smaller files and sandpaper so that I get as close a match to, uh, to that metal as I can. All right. so. That's today's episode is to, to shape this entire area. Um, but I'm, I'm going to need to tape off that, that, that tang area first. And uh, I'll actually show you how, how I'm going to do that. So stick around and let me reposition the cameras and we'll do that. All right, um, I need to cut a piece of plastic out of this larger sheet so that I have a smaller piece that I can work with in order to cut out the sheet or cut out the shape that I need to, um, to protect this. <clears throat> I want to get in as far as I can. So I need to notch this away so that I can get past this, um, this safety um, tab and get forward up into the, um, up near where the bolt handle is. All right, so once I've got that cut in so that it'll, it'll um, get in that recess, then I'm going to use a marker and I'll put that in place and hold it. And then I'll come from underneath and mark the edge of that metal. And you can see that I've got, got that shape. So um, I'll cut that shape out, cut to the inside of the inside of the marker line. This doesn't have to be a perfect shape. Just what has to happen is when I get it onto the metal, then it does need to fit 
down inside the down inside the wood as well. So if it doesn't fit inside the wood, then I'm not going to be able to shape shape that wood radius as well. Actually, that's pretty good. Um, and does it fit down inside? Almost. Like I said, it doesn't need to be a perfect fit because all it needs to do is keep my rasp and my files from from hitting the hitting the metal. All right. So we'll use uh, use that tape. I'll take away piece of it here and get that up inside there. God, is that sticky? All right. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to wrap that down underneath because I need to have it fit inside the inside the uh, the wood. The um, the entire barrel has to fit. I mean, excuse me, the entire receiver has to fit down inside there. And the last piece is right around this radius. The nice thing about the paper tape, or at least why is this paper tape, is I can shape it pretty well. And shape it so that it fits around all the little bends and curves and it's strong enough and sticky enough that it should hold it in place really well. All right so let's see how this works. I've got the shim taped on, uh, the plastic shim taped on. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to actually take the, uh, the, the, the bottom floor plate and, uh, and the uh, box mag assembly and I'm going to screw this into the, uh, into the gun stock and then from there I'll be able to start shaping, start sanding it down. Alright, so be right back. Alright, I've got the barrel in action screwed in place and we're going to start shaping this radius so that at least somewhat closely matches the uh, radius of the metal so we get that blend in. Um, I've got this piece of um, plastic and tape uh, on on the uh, top of the uh, tang of the receiver and um, my, 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 my goal is to really begin to round this over um, so that we get sort of get that final shape in this wrist area so that um, that it feels good and um, looks looks right. All right, so we're going to start working on that here. This actually can be a little scary because I'm already starting to hit the tape. And scratching this receiver is really not an option. catch that the other night. Got a little bit of a that palm swell. I took the took the palm swell out, but apparently not quite enough. So I still got a little bit of that hanging on here.
So I, I took the rest of that out and got, got it so it more closely mirrors the, um, the other side of the stock so that, that we want this grip area to be you know somewhat symmetrical. It, uh, it's just the way it is. Um, so I think we're good there. And started started back working on this uh, this area close to the tang. As I mentioned earlier, we're not we're not going to actually get right in there with these this rasp. The the rasp is really good for removing a lot of material in a hurry. This is my my fine rasp. Um, it's sort of my finish rasp. It doesn't take off as much material or as quickly, but it's still it's still pretty aggressive and still can do a lot of damage to the metal um, very quickly. So I've got that radius about as close as I'm going to get it um, with without taking that plastic shim off. It really didn't take a long time to do that. Um, I've got my bastard file and we'll sort of take as many of those gouges out as we can from the rasp. That way I'm not chasing them with uh, with sandpaper. It's about as close as I dare to get this without seeing the actual seeing the actual metal. Um, all right, give me a second to take the barrel and action out of the uh, out of the stock. I want to take the um, the plastic shim off that protective shim, and that way I can get a better look at where I'm actually. Um, what I'm actually looking at so that I can begin to make that or feather in that fit so that it blends to the metal. All right, give me a minute and I'll be right back. All right, so I took the shim off and I've got that shape so it somewhat closely mirrors, but I don't know if you can really pick it up, but there's a lot of material, a lot of wood that's proud right in this area right here. Um, here and there is some proud around the back of that radius this part over here um, is already pretty darn close so I'm not sure I want to take any of that down so what I'm going to do um, is I've already got a pencil line in there and so I'm going to take the barrel in action out and then I'm going to take a f my, my bastard file uh, which is not quite as aggressive and I'm going to bring this entire surface here down uh, and probably even this back radius down and and the hope is that I can can do this by taking small amounts of material out and then uh, just like when we did the inletting I'll take the barrel in action in and out and just verify my my depths and my match and I and again I need to leave a little bit of material proud because I still got to get in there with the sandpaper uh, and the sandpaper will remove um, will remove material so I need to be proud of that with the bastard file so that I can finish it up with with the sandpaper all right all right so I can see my line and let's see if we can't sort of bring that in slowly. Now, when I 
when I file into the, the material, I always file away from the inletting as opposed to filing into the inletting. If I file into the inletting, then I actually taking those raw edges of that and I could literally tear it by, by, by um, filing, um, filing towards the inlet. If I file away from the inlet, then I'm actually picking up, I'm picking up that edge and then I'm forcing it into the wood itself. So the wood acts as a chip breaker and helps, helps keep those edges intact. So you get to see how we have to be really careful around the metal when when we're when we're trying to shape that close close to the metal. We don't want to do any damage. We don't want to gouge it. We don't want to scratch it. So that's the last time you're going to see that work being done on that stock. Uh, you've sort of got a good sense or a good flavor for for how how. Um, how we sort of just slowly, slowly uh, mill away the material, uh, so, slowly rasp or file it away, trying to get that final shape. You get to see how we try to make it as symmetrical as we can in those areas that need to be symmetrical. And um, I'm going to continue that process uh, until that entire stock is done. So the next time we come back uh, on that spring field, I should have all the shaping done and we well then, uh, I'll have the shaping done and probably have all the sanding done as well. So the next time we come back, um, I, want, I want to show you some, some parts of the finishing process, uh, how, we, how we color it, how we sort of um, color away or paint away some of those patches, trying to get them to blend in. Um, so so that'll, be, that'll be the next time we get together looking at um, looking at the spring field. So again, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.